Hello again, friends, and thank you for joining me for another whiskey tasting. This one is one I'm very excited about. It's a very special whiskey, rare, old, and something that you do not see every day. And for that, we have Scott to thank. So thank you, Scott, for providing us with this whiskey, which is the Old Weller Antique 107 from 1973. What was going on in 1973? Well, it was a year after the Van Winkle family had, uh, under financial pressure, sold the Stitzel Weller Distillery to Norton Simon, which later became via a series of mergers and acquisitions, part of Diageo, which now preserves the building and runs it as the visitor center for Bullet. But there's no distilling going on in Stitzel Weller anymore, and, and for quite some time. Um, that is a tragedy, and it's one of those things that bourbon lovers lament. Why did they sell it? Well, if you go back in time, the 1960s were not a great time for whiskey. So fashions were changing, fads were changing in, in all regards, and, and whiskey not least of them. And Whiskey was increasingly viewed as, uh, I should say, pappy's drink or, or grandpappy's drink or dad's drink or something that was not appealing to the younger generation. They wanted lighter spirits like vodka. And so you saw whiskey makers change their tack and try to start accelerating aging and aging whiskey in used wood so that it would have a lighter character and, and flavor. Uh, they were trying to package it in ceramic decanters, and the Van Winkle certainly did a lot of this uh, kitschy little sculptures of, uh, you name it. I mean, any anything that you could possibly think of, they, they molded the decanter in that form and then put some whiskey in it. And again, the whiskey was really just an afterthought. It was just, just trying to move the liquid and the bottle was really the appeal for collectors. So bad times. And after several years of, of mounting losses, I've been told by somebody in the Van Winkle family that it was other shareholders in the family that forced uh, Julian at that time was the uh, in head of head of the, the Stitzel Weller Distillery to uh, look for uh, a way to sell the business and, and to stem the bleeding. So um, whether that's true or whether that's a bit of posthumous reputation burnishing by the family, I can't say, but uh, that's irrespective of what we're going to be doing today, which is tasting some whiskey from a more glorious time. So what do we know about this? This was age seven years at the time it was bottled in 1973. So counting back from 73 by seven, you get to 1966, which is the year that uh, a year after the original Pappy Van Winkle passed away. Uh, this was um, whiskey that was distilled at, at Stitzel Weller and should be given us some of that old kind of dusty character. Again, this is super rare stuff. And I consulted with Ryan Alves, who you will remember from my interview with him about the Justin's House of Bourbon New Riff store pick. And I said, you know, what would a bottle of this stuff go for? And he said, I, you know, I would, I would guess at least $2,000. He had seen one from the, the late 60s, early 70s trade hands recently at 2500 So this is certainly not the, the type of whiskey that I'm buying every day, and I imagine most of our audience. But again, from, from the generosity of somebody else, we've got a really special treat. And without further ado, we're going to see exactly how special this is. So just to look at it, you can see it's this, this golden orangey, almost like amber color, just really beautiful. And the nose on this is is really something special. I, I can't uh, I can't put exactly my finger on it, but there's all sorts of like Im immediately you're like this is honey. This is this is pure like this very very rich honey note. But then all of a sudden um, you realize there's so much more to it. There's like a a musty funkiness. There's a ton of herbs and spices. So I'm getting like black pepper and cumin and nutmeg and like a little bit of black licorice maybe. Gosh and um, there's there's meaty notes in here, so I'm getting some I'm getting like barbecue chicken breast perhaps, and uh, you know there's vanilla and there's oak from the from the barrel, but it's it's very well integrated, and, and the first impression is not of 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 a ton of oak, it's of um, all this other stuff that's been allowed to to emerge. Again, this is only seven years old, and uh, it's a weeded mash bill, so you wouldn't you wouldn't expect the the this to be too hard edged of the oak to dominate necessarily at this age, but you know the first time I smelled this, there was an interesting like if you've ever been to, to Napa Valley and you've wandered through a wine cellar where all these barrels of wine are, are maturing, you, there's this the scent that kind of rises up into the air from those, and there's there's actually a bit of that. It was it was pretty pretty uncanny, and I don't think I'd ever tasted that in a whiskey before. So this is this is one of those again where you could just you could just sit and sniff at it for half an hour, an hour. I mean it it is it continues to change and, and be a little bit different every single time I. Uh, I stick my nose in the glass. Yeah, I'm getting like a like a toasted buttered bread or maybe even like a grilled cheese. Oh man, so much here. And this is really what what people why people go bonkers for this uh, dusty whiskey. They um, they look for for a different time, and you know we've got a similar thing in, in Scotch whiskey where um, production processes were different. There uh, were not 
uh, huge corporations with spreadsheets uh, necessarily keeping track of yield and productivity and all this stuff that's now done by computer. I mean, it was it was in a lot of ways still just traditions passed down by hand uh, persisting at this point in time. And so um, you had a very different approach to whiskey making and the whiskey that resulted from that was was very different from, from what we might taste today. So yeah, just, just gorgeous. All the same marmalade. Did I say that already? Anyway, there it is, marmalade. Like orange or apricot marmalade. I really like. I don't even want to taste this. It's just so, um, you know. Once once I start tasting, I often the the nose kind of becomes an afterthought to me. It's hard to go to go back to that period from um, right before you you had it in your mouth. So, but I got to move on. Jason's made me pledge to keep these under ten minutes. So we are like a little more than halfway through. Mm. I've wet my whistle. And it's interesting. There's in the way that in the way that the the nose is so upfront and so fruity and luscious. This is like really. Um, really stony and pert on the on the front of the mouth at least so that's kind of a fun uh, counterpoint mm. just like taking a little further back into my mouth like on the front to mid of the tongue there's a like kind of a woody maybe like a uh, like a slightly astringent or or like a grassy note mm. oh yeah and then and then once this gets around the sides of the tongue and, and into the cheeks and stuff it just like there's this, there's this incredible um, roundness and richness, and and like all these flavors just melding together, and it's it's like kind of monolithic. You can't, in the way that I often try to pick this one, that one, this one, and they they're they're distinct from each other. This is all just just seamless. It's just like this perfectly spherical whole. Mm. Proper shit. Yeah, um, I'm getting like a. There's like a sweet and salty, like a peanut brittle almost. I know that's a, a note I pick out in a lot of whiskeys. You're probably tired of me saying that, but peanut brittle um, around the top of the mouth. And let's just see what else we can tease out here. Mm. Yeah, there's a, again, that, that kind of funkiness. It reminds me of like, if you've ever been into like an old, like a really old bookshop, like a used bookshop where there's this, this kind of musty funk that hangs in there. There's a bit of that. Mm. Yeah, and this really lingers in a, in a in a gentle way, but it's there. I mean, it sits in the back of your sits in the back of your your mouth on your tongue, and um, yeah, there's a there's a the 107 is evident that 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 higher proof is um, you know you can feel that there's a little bit of a burn on here. Mm. Yeah, more of those nuts, just like cashews, like salted, really salty, nutty. Um, so how do you evaluate this? Like, this is really the, the hardest part of what I do. And um, not that anything I do is particularly hard, but, you know, you get these. So I've, I've had a couple of these. Brett very generously gave me the um, Old Crow Ceramic Chessmen. Uh, I've had this this old Weller Antique 107. Um, there was a, another uh, dusty one that, that was uh, in the queue. And, um, I mean, these are these are unicorn bottles. And not in the way that marketing people throw one well as a unicorn bottle. Like, this, this was a... Um, bottle distilled at the Stitzel Weller distillery. And there's not, there's a finite quantity of those and they're disappearing rapidly. So um, there's a price to go along with it. Like, would I, would I go out and pay 2000 bucks for this or any other bottle of whiskey? Like, I can't imagine doing that. I would, it would have to be something that had unique personal resonance for me. And this is, uh, this is wonderful. It just, it just doesn't. But um, so I kind of have to step outside of malt's price sensitive scoring framework and just say like, kind of what is this and how, how good is it in the grand scheme of whiskey? And, and for me, this one is up there. I mean, it's, this is, this is tiptoeing on the border between eight and nine and it's, it's wonderful whiskey in its own right. And I think if you poured this for anybody, they'd say, wow. But as a, as a time capsule and as a look back into a prior era, when again, all these things were, were being done so differently and resulted in much, in much different flavors and, and, and aromas and textures from anything you get today. Um, this is a really cool experience. So if you if you have somebody in your life that has this and is willing to share, by all means, uh, please uh, please avail yourself of, of this if you get the chance because it is uh, it's something really special. There's more in the review, and uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's www.malt-review.com. But again, just really appreciate your guys' attention and spending a few minutes with me sharing uh, sharing this thing we love. So uh, I will leave it there, and uh, just wanted to say thanks to everybody. Cheers.